Hello again, viewers, and greetings, fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night, and welcome to part five of my Minecraft mod guide to the wonderful mod called Mariculture, which adds all kinds of nifty stuff to the waters of Minecraft, the oceans and the rivers, and yes, even uh, the lava of Minecraft, but we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, in this episode, whoa, that was a weird little lag hiccup. In this episode, we're going to be going over the stuff related to fishing. Not the fish breeding yet, but just the fishing. The fish breeding is going to have to be its own episode, and that'll be the final one of the series. Uh, but in order to get fishing, you're going to need a couple things. Fishing poles and bait, and there are three dif different kinds of fishing poles you can make reed wooden and titanium and the reed one is crafted using just sugar canes and some string to get that and uh i, I guess i should go over this also uh you can see on here it says ant bait grasshopper bait and maggot bait and each of the three fishing rods have three different uh types of bait that they can uh use for catching fish uh, so you will only find th the same three whenever you craft a, a reed fishing rod. It'll always be ant, grasshopper, and maggot. Uh, but next up is the wooden fishing rod, and that uses the polished sticks and two string to get you one of those. And the wooden rod will use ant bait, bait worm, and maggot bait. And then finally, the titanium fishing rod uses polished titanium rods and some string and i'm gonna go ahead and grab this rain go away uh a couple of quick things to mention about the fishing rods come on stop raining uh they they are uh segregated into strength and the weakest one is the reed one it can only last for 50 casts or oh, not 50 64 casts a stack of bait uh and you can only cast the fishing rods if you have their appropriate bait next to them in the hot bar uh, so each time you run out of a stack you're gonna have to scoot something over so it will replenish so keep that in mind when you're using it uh, the wooden rod uses three stacks before it breaks, and the titanium rod uses nine stacks of bait before it breaks. Now, speaking of breaking, they can be repaired. You can take uh, two of the same broken, or not broken, but uh, uh, partially used fishing rods and craft them together to get a repaired version of that same rod. Uh, so you can uh, sort of save resources like the titanium over there uh, if you need to for getting that. Uh, but you can catch live fish, and that is a thing in this mod. There are raw fish and live fish, but in order to catch the live fish, you have to be underwater. So bring some sort of breathing gear with you or go up for air periodically. Uh, but you can use the fishing rods for catching live fish. Uh, also, using a fishing rod, not only do you get experience, but pretty much every cast, you're going to get something. Unless something messes up, uh, it's pretty much a one-for-one. One. Uh, and the uh, alternative to doing that is using an automatic fisher, which I will uh, get to in just a bit. But let's uh, cover the bait here real quick. There are six of them, like I mentioned. Uh, ant, maggot, grasshopper, worm, bread, and raw minnow. Uh, the ant bait is gotten from sifting dirt, grass, which you can use silk touch to get, uh, wood, grass blocks, and saplings. The maggot can be found from sifting rotten flesh or any of the vanilla raw meats. Grasshoppers can be gotten from leaves. The tall grass, again, grass blocks and saplings. Worms come from dirt and grass blocks. Bread is just vanilla bread. And raw minnow you have to catch yourself. So you need to uh, already be fishing in order to get that. Let me get these all on the screen just for a second uh they are ranked in in uh uh utility i guess is a good enough word for it 
Uh, the lowest on the rung are, are the ants. And you can see it has a zero there. Uh, next up is bread. And when I placed these, they were in no particular order. So I, I have the signs. Uh, if I had planned this out better, they'd be the, the one would be there. I'm sorry. But uh, the, the bread is a one. The maggot and grasshopper are two. The worm is three. And the raw minnow is five. And, and basically what that means is uh, the likelihood of catching something good uh, is determined by the tier of the bait that you are using and also the tier of the fishing rod that you are using so keep that in mind however the raw minnow and the bread can only be used on the titanium uh rods so it's got a one and a five how how uh, uh big a spread that is why why it uses a level one thing i don't understand but whatever uh anyway the way you get the bug uh, bait from this is to use something called a sifter. And you can see a sifter right here. And the recipe for that is any two planks, uh, a fishing net, which I went over in the first episode, uh, and any two sticks. Yes, this is bamboo, but it counts as a stick for the recipe. Um, and that will get you one sifter. And the way this works is you can just chuck things into it. Let me get up here above it real quick. And you can see that there's some stuff popping out. And it is not necessarily a one for one. Uh, I am actually in creative mode, so that's probably why it's doing the one for one. Let me try this again without being in creative mode. There we go. Out of a stack of dirt, you can expect to get maybe a dozen uh, ants. And if you want to save some time, you can just chuck in a whole stack at once and it will get you, give you the, uh, the uh, amount that it would have given you if you'd chuck things in one at a time. And uh, I need to go ahead and grab these worms here uh, for the next part. But uh, the sifter can also be sort of automated. Uh, it doesn't work with a, a chest or anything like that, but, uh, and let me go ahead and bring up a chest here real quick, just to show you what I'm talking about. If I place a chest nest to, next to it and start chucking things in, you can see they're popping into my inventory. So, uh, it, it doesn't output automatically, it just drops on the ground. But if you, for instance, have a quarry or something going, uh, what you can do is drop things in using a build craft pipe or, or some other device. I'm using a dispenser here. And you can have a sort of little chamber where the dirt just falls in and uh, I have this dirt just enclosing the area so it doesn't go flying off this has nothing to do with the sifter but you can see it's just falling in like that on its own you don't have to throw it yourself uh, but uh, you can sort of automate this however if you want to gather these items you're gonna have to have like a, a hopper set up or vacuum hopper or a golem or, or something uh, to be able to gather them as they fly around the room uh, so keep that in mind if you want to try to automate this. It's kind of messy, but it is marginally feasible. Uh, but let's go ahead and cover the actual fishing. It's just like regular Minecraft. Uh, let me go back into normal mode. Uh, you cast the thing, the, the, the bobber, you wait for it to make the skadoomph noise. Come on. There we go. And you will get some experience you've heard the ding and more than likely a raw fish of some sort let me get rid of the ant bait uh like uh, but like i mentioned before if you uh are underwater when you do your fishing well let me get that out of there and floating hopefully this will go splash before i run out of air come on get a little bit more air Come on. What's up, Bubbles? You can do it. 
Don't make me wait forever. Oh, and also the bobber will drift away from you uh, over time. It can get pretty far away. There we go. And is it in my inventory? Yes. Oh, uh, air. But you can see this one is a uh, is not a raw fish like this one says raw. This one, <clears throat> excuse me, has a lightish blue color to the name and a symbol next to it. That symbol is the uh, the Venus or female symbol. And what that means is I've got a female stingray. <clears throat> excuse me. And you can get either male or female if you manage to catch a live one. Uh, but it is a little difficult to catch live ones yourself. So uh, there is a solution to that. Instead of doing your own fishing, why, whoops, why don't you go ahead and build this thing called an automatic fisher? And the recipe for that, where did it go? Why does that keep happening? Hold on. Let me, do I have one in here? No. There we go. Go ahead and leave that in there. Whoops. Recipe. Anyway, uh, you need two wooden fishing rods. You need uh, one wood plank two logs of any sort and a wooden construction block which i went over in the first episode uh, and any variety of the fish so you're going to if you want to make this you're going to have to have already started catching fish uh, and it seems that it does have to be a fully charged uh, fishing rod <coughs> excuse me uh, the uh, partially used ones don't seem to work for crafting it but uh, that will get you one of these automatic fishers. Now, the way these work is, first off, you have to supply them with power. And secondly, uh, you have to have them placed directly above a uh, block of water. So I'm going to just give the uh, power by way of this energy cell here, have it output that way. And when you place it, you can see it automatically fills up from that with the RF, but it does also use MJ, so if you aren't producing RF, you can use MJ instead. Uh, but it is uh, a lot less efficient, as I recall, uh, using MJ. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the fissure itself isn't doing anything, and that's because, well, first, you're going to need a fishing rod, and second, you're going to need some bait for that rod. And when you do that, it'll use one bait, and it will start this little uh, loading or progress bar in these bubbles. And if it catches something, it will put it into its inventory, unless you have an adjacent inventory. And hopefully I'll catch something with this one. Let's see here. Oh, I didn't catch something. Don't make me a fool. I'm already a fool. Come on. You can do it. Almost there. Just catch something. Just one thing. I don't care. And... Nothing. Well, that's alright. Uh, just... Like with most automation of things, it is going to be a little less efficient than if you are doing it yourself. And uh, there is definitely not a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio of uh, catching things using the automatic fisher. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I actually went through and <clears throat> did some uh, experiments with the different biomes and I have some set up I'm going to go ahead and show you here uh, what I did is I set up uh, each of the nine permutations the the three uh, baits for the reeds three baits for the uh, wooden and three baits for the titanium and using one full usage of the reed fishing rod with ant I got uh, just a couple f uh, fish here. The uh, reed fishing rod with the grasshopper, pretty much the same thing. 
the maggot, I got almost the same thing, and uh, some vanilla fish, as well as a bowl that must have been floating in the water somewhere. Who knows? Uh, but that also demonstrates the next thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, you are going to be able to catch all kinds of weird little side things. Enchanted boots, enchanted books, iron wheels, ink sacks, that makes sense, uh, pearls, sticks, lots of sticks, uh, bones, leather, all kinds of different things you are going to find in the water you know, by uh, either fishing manually or using the automatic fisher. Uh, but as the... Uh, tier of the fishing rod goes up and as well as the uh, tier of the bait used, you will start to get more things caught and uh, more variety of stuff. And then we get on, on to the titanium here. A lot more fish, a lot more stuff. You can see some of the other types of things. You can even get bottles of enchanting, which is kind of neat. Uh, this is the bread bait, which is the tier one, but it's using the titanium, so clearly it's going to get more than the grasshopper over there. Uh, but where, where'd that go? There's some enchanted boots, feather falling, and projectile protection. Neat. Uh, and here we have the titanium fishing rod with uh, nine stacks of raw minnow. I got that much stuff plus this much stuff plus this much stuff, and I sorted these so I could do some counting. But, uh, I also wanted to go over real quick before I move on with the other machines, uh, the bits about the biome. Different biomes and different uh, conditions will give you different types of fish. Uh, for instance, I found here where I am in a beach biome for this stretch right here, and I, I tested this in just only vanilla biomes, uh, so you could get a an idea from uh, those what you can be looking for when you want to get some of your fish. But just using the automatic fisher, I was able to catch uh, in in this beach biome a uh, whole bunch of cod, a whole bunch of squid, a whole bunch of stingrays. Uh, let me come over here to show you these. We've got. Uh, the cod, the squid, where'd they go? Stingrays, a whole bunch of those, more squid. But I was also able to catch some catfish, some bass, uh, some jellyfish, uh, and what was the other one? Damselfish? Yeah, damselfish. Uh, got a bunch of those. Uh, and that is basically what I found here in the beach biome. Uh, just a, a quick look over here at the ocean. I was able to find uh, some stingrays, some damselfish, but also more cod and squid, some other similar things. Uh, but I was able to get, uh, what was it, the uh, tuna, which is uh, kind of rare, uh, but obviously you can catch it yourself there are several fish that you can catch on your own uh, but a lot of them are rather rare uh, but let's see here the next one I wanted to show you let me uh, come over here to the desert whoops I'm using f8 which is the Vanilla key for doing the the pan or the uh, not the panoramic but the slow camera moving. Uh, I can bound that key for my uh, mini map, so uh, I'm gonna have to do that a few times. But here in the desert, I was able to get a whole bunch of minnow and a whole bunch of neon tetra as well as some catfish and bass and a bunch of other things. Oh yeah, you can get name tags and records, just all kinds of stuff from that. Uh, but a warmer climate will give you uh, some uh, neon tetras and some minnow. Uh, so, for instance, if I come over to the jungle real quick, and it's getting nighttime, let me fix that. I was able to get some more damselfish, but uh, let's see here. Once again, neon tetra and some minnow whole bunch of those. Uh, I did get some perch here. 
uh, so that's another one that you can catch on your own. Uh, let's go over to, real quickly, the ice. Just a few more to cover here, real quick. Once again, Stingray, uh, Minnow you can catch in the, in the Taiga biome. A uh, bunch more perch, some catfish, and some bass. Nothing uh, new or special there. And where did the other uh, biome go? Let's uh, hear. River. Teleport to there. So, oops. Once again, minnow from the river. Damselfish, stingrays, perch, catfish, bass. Uh, so you can get a wide variety from catching on your own. You just have to jump around to different types of biomes uh, to find a whole bunch of these. Uh, but you are going to need to do some uh, special fishing in order to get a couple of the other natural ones. And let me go real quick back here and take care of these. Uh, we are now headed off, <clears throat> excuse me, to the nether because, and let me go ahead and grab this. There is a species of fish that you can only catch naturally in the nether. And that is called, I believe, the neth fish. Let me get down here to it. And I had this set up for all of the biomes that I tried, all eight of them, just to test it out to see if there's anything special going on. Uh, one thing, where'd it go, that I was able to find in here, if you do some fishing in the nether, you can stand a chance of getting gas tears and gold nuggets, but uh, the only fish you are going to be finding are these nest fish. And... Uh, my recommendation is to enclose yourself in an area because getting attacked by guests while fishing is not fun. Uh, and also, yes, you can try to get some live fish by swimming in lava, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Uh, but these automatic fishers work just fine, but you can still fish here in the nether. Go ahead and make a splash noise, please. Come on. There we go. You've heard that fizzle, uh, hopefully. Uh, if you are going to fish in the nether, you're going to stand a very high chance of your fish that you catch getting burnt up in the lava uh, just as you catch it. So you can pull them out and that worked perfectly for that demonstration. But uh, the best way to deal with the nether is to set up an automatic fisher. All right, one last visit, and then we are on to the rest of the uh, devices that revolve around the fishing. And that visit is off to the end. Because there is one species that you can only get from fishing in the end. Thankfully you can just pour yourself some water. Uh, but the fish that you get here is called, where did the chest go that has it? Night fish. And another thing that you can get in the nether are these void bottles. Now, apparently you're supposed to be able to place them or, or something. I, I don't know, I, I can't drink them. I can't extract fluids from them. I don't know what they're used for. Uh, the, uh, the mod update said that they're supposed to be placeable in the world or something like that. I have no idea if you have any idea what the void, uh, bottles are used for. Please let me know. I would love to find out. But the only fish you're going to be able to find in the nether are these night fish. And, oh, there you go. I have ender, and I think you can also get some ender pearls, maybe... I'm not sure about that. I didn't catch any on, on my adventure here. But those are the uh, vast majority, if not all, of the fish that you can catch 
on your own before you have to do breeding. <sighs> now, breeding is an interesting mechanic. You are going to need a couple of things. First off, a fish feeder, uh, which will uh, require a chest, six wicker, which I went over in the first episode, uh, and any two of the fish that you can catch in this mod that will get you one fish feeder. Uh, another thing that you might want to uh, make is th using any of the raw fish. You can make this stuff called fish meal. And fish meal is used as part of the breeding. However, in place of fish meal, you can use any of the baits. But the next thing you're going to need for the fishing is a tank. And there are three different sizes of tank. The basic the intermediate, and the advanced. The first two are only too tall, and it's just three on each side. Uh, there's nothing special on the bottom. You can use dirt or sand or glass or gravel or cobblestone or, or bedrock if you want. Uh, but the sides have to be a sturdy, solid block, or they can be sandstone or glass but they but they can't be like dirt or sand or gravel uh, another thing to note about them is that uh let me go ahead and interact with the fish feeder here you can see that it is surrounded with water uh and that's just regular water you can pump it in or use buckets whatever but you can see i can interact with the fish feeder however if i put one more block here a solid block I can no longer interact with it. That's because it detects that this is no longer a an air or a soft block. Uh, and also, you can't put water there either. So basically, get some wood or stone or cobblestone, something sturdy or, or sandstone or glass, and make this shape for the basic, this shape for the intermediate, that's only too tall for both of these, and then three tall for the advanced. And you can see, hopefully you can see the fish feeder there in the middle right here. Uh, but those are the three sizes. Any of your fish breeding can be done in the advanced. However, some of them only require the intermediate and only a couple of them but some of them only require the basic the vast majority of what you're going to be doing will uh, be with these intermediate sized ones but I recommend if you are going to do the breeding just go ahead and set up uh, one or more of the advanced ones now uh, unlike the automatic fisher the tanks and the fish feeding do not automatically output to adjacent inventories. And that's important because, let me go over what we've got here. Uh, first off, ow, you are going to need some fish food, and that can be fish meal or the bait, like I mentioned. So let me go ahead and show you how this works. Chuck it into the water, and the fish feeder will automatically slurp it up. Now, this isn't all that much space, uh, but... If you use a, a, a storage upgrade, I believe it's called storage. Yeah, storage upgrade. Uh, you can uh, expand that, and I'll show you that in just a Well, I'll go ahead and show you now. There we go. Ta-da! A lot more space. 256 instead of just 16. And uh, also one other thing it will only slurp up the amount that it needs and everything else will remain in the water. So there we go, 256 is half a stack of fish meal. But there are a couple other slots here. Uh, there is a slot for a female f live fish, a male live fish. Uh, the output, which I'm sure can be pumped out using uh, an AE system or, or build craft pipes or something, but it won't automatically output to an inventory. Uh, so keep on top of it, because that's just two spots. You've got the progress bar once again, and the place for the uh, upgrades. Now the upgrades, next thing I wanted to cover, uh, 
if you uh, find yourself with some fish that don't like their environment, you can change the environment of the tank instead of having to build the tank in its environment. The heating upgrades make the water warmer. Cooling upgrades make them make the water colder. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I have a frog in my throat or something. Uh, the purity upgrade will make the water fresh water. The impurity upgrade will make it salt water. And then the ethereal upgrade is needed for uh, doing the breeding with the uh, fish related to the end and to the nether. So you're going to have to get an ethereal upgrade uh, before you can really start working with that. Uh, but I'm going to grab a couple things here. Put in the male fish. And it says missing mate. And you can see that this is red. If And that's because it, it doesn't have the requirements met for it to start working. And the female minnow. And you can see this is still red. It says bad biome. And... Uh, that's because the minnow requires a uh, a freshwater environment. So put the purity upgrade in and you can see it starts working. Now, every cycle of this will chip a little bit away from their lives. And you can see their lives are different lengths. Uh, so uh, one is going to die before the other uh, if you do it like this. But uh, the ultimate uh, goal of doing the fish breeding is to get these things called eggs. Uh, now the fish do output other things other than the eggs, but I'm going to go over that in the next episode when I cover the, uh, the uh, data for the fish breeding itself, as well as the uses for the fish and their functionality and all that. But uh, the eggs that you're going to get from doing your fish breeding, uh, which by the way, one last thing I should mention is if these two spots overflow, anything that the fish produce, any more output, will uh, spill out into the water and you're going to have to gather it yourself or have like a golem do it or something. Uh, but, or, or you could just line all the rest of the bottom with hoppers and that, that can work. But um, if you don't stay on top of it and the chunk is loaded, the output will just disappear and you won't get anything. But anyway, moving on. Sorry about the little interruption there. But uh, once you get eggs uh, from doing your breeding, you will need something called an incubator. And that is a three block device, which you can see here. Uh, and it is built by using one incubator base, and that requires a heating component, titanium battery, uh, uh, which I went over both those previously, some sort of uh, stained light blue uh, dye or stained sapling if you have uh, the, uh, the uh, stained or, or dye sapling, dye trees mod, whatever. Uh, or Project Red Exploration? That doesn't sound right. Uh, but uh, you'll need some light blue and also some light blue stained clay in order to get the incubator base. And then you're going to need two incubator tops and that requires brown dye, the white stained clay and a heating component and a raw fish. Uh, instead of the battery there. So you're going to need some sort of fish for that and that'll get you one of these. You're going to need two of those to make it because it is a, let's see here, let me go ahead and grab this and, whoops, wrong thing, this. And the way you build it is just by placing the base down and then placing two tops on it and it will automatically form into this three block structure. Let me things out. Uh, also, I wanted to mention you can put as many of them right next to each other as you want. They don't interfere with each other, so you can cram a whole bunch uh, adjacent to each other. Uh, but once again, I did learn that they do not automatically eject to inventories. So you're going to have to stay on top of them because they only have nine output slots 
and one fish egg can put out all kinds of stuff. I have a fish egg already to go here, and what happens without the use of any power or anything, it just starts cycling through, and over time, it will spit out fish eggs and maybe some, or, or uh, not fish eggs, but fish, live fish, male and female, uh, and possibly some other stuff. Uh, now, the different breeds that you have will determine how long they last. So, uh, it might take you just a few minutes for the fish egg, which is basically a handful of fish eggs, uh, plural. Uh, it might take just a few minutes or it might take half an hour. Uh, so that's another thing you're going to want to watch out for because once that fills up, they'll, this will stop functioning. It won't start spitting stuff out. It'll just stop functioning. Uh, but the, uh, the fish eggs are, once you get them going, are going to produce a lot more fish. So you don't necessarily have to do as much fishing if you don't want uh, but like I said, it won't automatically output to inventories. But that is pretty much it for this part of the guide. I hope everything made sense and I hope I covered everything correctly. Uh, if I didn't or if I uh, got something wrong, please feel free to message me and let me know. I will correct it in the description. But uh, as far as I know about all of these things that is everything there is to know uh, so thank you very much for watching if you do have any questions comments or suggestions please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i'll do my best to get back to you as quick as possible or you could message me if you have a question for me directly you can you can message me on twitter at thorn of night um, and i will also try to get back to you as quick as possible um uh, if you like this video and you like what I'm doing here, please feel free to give a like. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my future stuff comes out. Uh, but I have some fish breeding permutations to go try, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up uh, at this point. So thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.